Hi guys, I've come back with another topic, which is a new partogram, also known as the labor care guide, also known as the next generation partograph, right? So quickly, we're just going to go through the old partograph. We're just going to skim through it, tell you the new partograph, how to plot it. And then we are going to discuss why this came about, what is extra in this, right? So this is the old partograph that we've traditionally been plotting. Over here, we have uh, the following sections. We have the patient details. Then we have the fetal monitoring. So we look at the fetal heart rate. Then we have the labor monitoring in which we are looking at the liker, the contractions, the cervical dilatation, the descent. Then we have one uh, space for medicines and drugs being given. And then for, you know, maternal characteristics like pulse and BP. Over here, uh, we see in the cervical dilatation section, there is one alert line and action line. And typically we've been taught Traditionally, that uh, you know, uh, cervical dilatation goes at the rate of one centimeter per hour. If it is proceeding at that rate, then our line of cervical dilatation will lie to the left of the alert and action line, and everything is going well. But if it is slower than that, it will gradually cross the alert line, you know, which will uh, make us a little worried. Uh, but still, we don't need to like sort of probably intervene uh, by doing anything. But if it goes to the right of the action line, it means it is a very tardy labor and then we need to intervene. Right now coming very quickly to the new partograph. But before that, I'll quickly just say this is uh, traditionally we thought the graph of labor was something like this. Basically, there was a di diagonal straight line. So if this X being the time and Y being your cervical dilatation, we thought that this goes as a straight line. It is like directly you know, so that is why traditionally we had the definition of one centimeter per hour. But evidence-based medicine studies have actually shown that the graph sort of looks like this, which means that as labor progresses, the more the dilatation, the faster it progresses further. So if a woman comes to me at three centimeter, she will, uh, the labor from three centimeter to four centimeter is actually slower than labor progress from four centimeter to five centimeter. Four centimeter to five centimeter is slower than say six centimeter to seven centimeters, right? So we cannot have a fixed cutoff of one centimeter. Another thing in the older one is that cervical dilatation was starting at four centimeter per hour, right? Uh, in the new one, what we are doing is the cervical dilatation, the first reading is taken at 5 cm per hour. So we are defining active stage of labor to begin at 5 cm. Now quickly, let's come to our partograph and let's just plot a partograph. So the first section is, so the new partograph basically, just quickly I'll tell you this, it has seven sections. One section is your patient details. Second section which has been added, which is new, is supportive care. Right. Then third section is fetal monitoring. Fourth section is maternal monitoring. Fifth section is labor progress. Sixth section is medications. And seventh section, which has again been added, is shared decision making. So quickly, let's come to this partograph. We can see the first section over here. The first section is the patient details. So our patient name is Seema. She's a primary gravida and labor onset for this patient has been spontaneous, right? And she went into active labor on 10th of October. And, uh, you know, she came to us at 5 p.m. So this is the first time that we are plotting this one block is one hour. She came to us at 5 p.m. And when she came to us on 10th of October, she said, Doctor, I have been leaking since the last two hours. So time of rupture of membranes was 3 p.m. And she has no known risk factors, right? So every one hour, we'll just uh, plot this. So this is 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. and so on, right? Now coming to the second section. So the first section is done. Coming to the second section, which is supportive care, which has basically been uh, a new thing that has been added in this. So we have four things over here. One is companion. Companion is actually the most important thing that has been added by WHO uh, as a, a part of respectful maternity care and the new labor care guideline. So if the companion is present, we write a Y and if the companion is not there, then we write an N. Next is pain relief. So, you know, pharmacological, non-pharmacological, maybe we give her PCM or offer her epidural analgesia. Yes, if it is there. No, if it is not. Oral fluid, if she's taking orally, then again, yes and no. And lastly, posture. So for posture, we have two 
acronyms, uh, abbreviations. We have MO for mobile and SP for supine. So although uh, the first thing that is conspicuous in this graph, if I look at it as a whole, like if I have a bird's eye view of this is, there is no alert and action line over here. So we have done away with the alert and action line, but what we have done is we have sort of created a column here, which is the alert column. So in everything that we are marking, there are certain alert characteristics so if that is happening we quickly circle it so that we can do something about it right so absence of a companion is an alert feature uh, no pain relief is an alert feature oral fluid if she's not taking is an alert feature and sp supine is an alert feature right so for example at the time that she came to us at 5 pm she did not have a companion she came alone she was alone at home she had no pain relief so that's also a no and we circle these two she was taking oral fluids though and at the time that she came she was mobile right so this is the first thing at presentation this is one hour right so every half an hour we will plot her uh, baseline FHR. So less than 110 is worrisome, more than 160 is worrisome. At the time that she came to us, her pul uh, fetal heart was 130 per minute. All right. And there were no uh, decelerations. So I write an N. So it's fine. So if it is a late deceleration, uh, again, it is an alert feature for us. Uh, when I did her further examination, I did a pervaginal. Her liker was clear. Clear is something that we are okay with. Intact is something we are okay with, written with an I. What are we not okay with? What is alert and amniotic fluid? So B, which is bloodstained liquor, and M3+, which means a thick pea soup kind of meconium, right? And the fetal position at the time that I did the PV, I found that the baby was occipito-posterior. Now we know uh, occipito-posterior and occipito-transverse can have a tardy progress of labor and may go into arrest of labor itself. So whenever we have occipito-posterior or occipito-transverse labor, that is also an alert feature. And at that time, she did not have any caput or molding. So I'll just write, so I'll just write, oh, what's happening? Sorry. So I will just write, zero for both again if it is caput 3 plus and molding 3 plus that means the molding is happening in a way that it is not sort of reducible it's not going back to its original place then that is worrisome but before that we are not very worried right so uh, this is your second which was fetal heart monitoring next we come to the woman's characteristics so pulse BP, systolic and diastolic, temperature and urine. If all these things are normal and if they are not falling in your alert line, which is pulses between 60 and 120, systolic is more than 80, less than 140 and diastolic is less than 90, temperature is normal, there is no albuminuria, ketonuria or uh, sugar in the urine. If all of this is, for example, normal, like this is 78, and uh, this is for example 120, 80, 36.5 and this is nil, then I don't need to do this every hour, then I can go to 1, 2, 3, 4, the fourth hour. I will plot this every four hours, right? So the next reading needs to be plotted over here. Next we come to contractions. Ne next, The next section that we are looking at is labor monitoring. So labor monitoring may we will look at the contractions and we will look at the labor progress in terms of cervical dilatation and descent. So the first thing that we are looking at is contractions. One difference from the previous one is that we were looking at the time, the number and the strength of contractions. Over here we are not looking at the strength of contractions. If the contractions are more than 2 and less than 5, then it is reassuring. Anything deviating from this is abnormal. And duration of contractions again if it is less than 20 that is alert more than 60 is also alert so for example at the time she came to us she had three contractions in every 10 minutes lasting for 35 seconds so this is normal right so we are not very worried now coming to labor progress in terms of cervical dilatation now this is where a very uh, major change has happened so if you look at the y-axis over here you can see five six seven eight nine ten this is actually the centimeters of cervical dilation uh, dilation so the alert so our active labor is starting at five centimeters and right next to it you can see these number of hours that's written so next to five i have more than equal to six hours what this basically means is that if a woman is coming to me at the dilation of 5 centimeters, then I can easily give her 6 hours to progress. If she remains at 5 centimeters, 6 hours have elapsed and she's still at 5 centimeters, it is only then that I will think this labor is progressing slowly. And it is only then that I should have the need to intervene. All right. And if at 6 centimeters, similarly, if she stays at 6 centimeters for more than 5 hours, that's when I need to intervene, not any time before that. At 7, so this you can correlate with the graph of 
labor that I explained earlier. So at 5 centimeters, 5 to 6 it's slower, 6 to 7 it's sort of, sort of faster, 7 to 8 even faster. So the amount of time that we are given, uh, giving at every dilation, at every centimeter of dilation progressively becomes smaller, right? So coming back to this, so this patient when she came to me, for example, she came at a dilation of 5 centimeters. So 5 centimeters I have marked and descent. How do I see descent? I don't see it as a per vaginal examination. I see it on per abdominal examination by the rule of 5. So above the pubic symphysis, I pay, place these five fingers and I see how many fifths of the head are palpable. So as the head is going down, it will gradually go, go from five fifth, four fifth, three fifth, two fifth, one fifth and zero fifth. So that is how I plot it. Plot it. For example, at the time she came to us, she was four fifth palpable, right? And at that time she was not taking any medication. If we are giving her anything, uh, then we have to plot the oxytocin in drops per minute. We were not giving her anything. There was no medicine and there were no IV fluids. So what is the assessment? Assessment is no companion, no analgesia and spontaneous labor, right? And our plan can be, we will continue with our routine monitoring, offer analgesia, and call the companion, right? So in the next hour, what happens is we have called her companion. So this has become a yes, her sister has come and we have given her epidural analgesia and she's still taking oral fluids and we have encouraged her to be mobile, right? So all this is reassuring and monitoring, fetal heart monitoring is ongoing. Over here, I had a moment where I was having variable deceleration, but it's not late, so I'm not bothered. You keep plotting the rest of it. All right, and amniotic fluid remains clear. Fetal position, I'm not uh, monitoring. I will only do it at the time of my next reassessment, which is four hours later. So this I cannot comment upon. Um, fetal position, capital molding cannot be commented upon right now. And again, four hours later, we will do the pulse rate BP monitoring of the patient. Uh, contractions, although we need to keep monitoring every half an hourly, so this will continue. So three four, four, three, and going say at 40, min 40 seconds, 45 seconds. So this is going on. This patient is progressing fine. So the next um, examination that I do at 1, 2, 3, 4, at 9 p.m., for example, at 9 p.m. from this, she has gone to 8 centimeters per hour, right? So it has been less than 6 hours and she has progressed from 5 centimeters to the next value. So I'm not very worried. This labor is going well. So after four hours, when I do the reassessment, I see that from, uh, sorry, six centimeters, she has now, uh, from five centimeters, now she's become eight centimeters. So she has not remained at five centimeters for more than six hours. So I'm more than happy with my progress. And the descent, when I do the abdominal palpation from four fifth palpable, she is now just two fifth palpable. So this is also going well. So because she's progressing well, I don't need to, I was not giving her oxytocin and I still don't need to give her any oxytocin. I'm not giving her any medicine or any IV fluids. So all this has been completed. This, by the way, has to be completed simultaneously. I'm just doing it for purposes of this video, right? So our assessment at four hours later when we are doing this PV is normal labor progress. All right, we are happy and we are just going to watch for spontaneous labor. All right, contrast this with another scenario that I'm giving you that, for example, a patient came to us in active labor at seven centimeters dilation at 5 p.m. And everything was the same as mentioned before. And at 9 p.m. when I'm doing her reassessment, she is still at 7 centimeters. So we know at 7 centimeters, we can only give 3 hours. So if it is going at more than 3 hours and she's, she's still at 7 centimeters, then we are having a tardy progress of labor. So between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m., she has not progressed at all. And now we are a little worried. So our plan will change slightly from watch from spontaneous labor. What I am going to do is I am probably going to take decision for augmentation and maybe I am going to start oxytocin here, right? So two units at eight drops per minute, right? So uh, you're just going to come back to the previous scenario. This was just an example of what, how to plot the labor care guide and at what uh, instances you need to intervene and an example of how the hours that are written in front of the cervical dilation translate into plotting of this graph. Right. So coming back, I'm not going to fill the rest of the columns because of shortage of time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward to the next uh, four hours. Forget these. Right. One, two, three, four. So at 9 p.m. it was like this. At 1 a.m. I find that she is fully dilated. 10 centimeters of dilation and the head is 
जीरो बाय फाइव पैल्पेबल राइट सो वंस इट हिट्स टेन सेंटीमीटर्स देन वन मोर थिंग दैट हैपन्स इन दिस लेबर केयर गाइड दैट इज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन द प्रीवियस पार्टोग्राम इज दैट वी हैव अ सेक्शन for monitoring the second stage of labor because second stage of labor is one part that needs very intense monitoring because a lot of stillbirths can happen due to inadequate monitoring of the second stage everything else remains the same this is 1 am 2 am right we are still going to plot whether the companion is present or not whether analgesia is being given or not whether she is taking oral fluids or not whether she is mobile or supine right and again fetal heart now we are monitoring and we are writing every 15 minutes instead of half an hour and we are doing the same for the decelerations so for example 128 no deceleration early deceleration we'll keep plotting this right the next thing that we'll have is the same things go for caput molding everything else let us come straight away to the contractions that will be the same and dilation is already 10 cm and uh, she's already at 0 by 5 but for example if at the previous pv she was at 2 by 5 or 1 by 5 then we could have continued plotting it right at the time that she starts pushing we just write a p when she is trying to you know like uh, put in all her expulsive efforts right so and at 2 am for example this baby delivers so this is the complete plotting of our labor care guide now what are the differences between the old and new this one is a very very women centric partogram and three keywords that you must remember the who and all hospitals are really focusing on right now is respectful maternity care uh, to combat with the disrespect and abuse that a lot of women have complained that they face in our labor units across hospitals not only in india but across the world right so what is extra over here we have added supportive measures there is a shared decision making between the person who's plotting the partogram the senior midwife and obstetrician and also the patient and her companion and another important thing that has been uh, added is very very intense second stage monitoring what has been removed the traditional 1 cm per hour rate of dilation and descent that we had in the previous partograph and the alert and action line have been completely done away with and strength of uterine contraction has also been removed right and why was this done because it was seen that when we adhere to this very strict and very fast 1 cm per hour definition we are actually adding a lot of unnecessary interventions like augmentation of labor and unnecessary cesarean sections right so that is why it has been done away with and we are giving more time for the woman to progress into labor uh progress uh, into normal labor the disadvantages of this was when the labor care guide was formulated it was done mainly for low risk women and in low risk women we can allow for this amount of time you know like 6 hours for 5 cm and so on but you may have a woman who has severe preeclampsia the labor care guide does not apply for a woman who has say abruption or severe preeclampsia in which you really need to expedite the labor and the other disadvantages women in latent phase have been excluded so you might have a woman who is coming to you at 4 cm of dilation i mean it's a it's very difficult why is 4 cm not as important as 5 cm to monitor right so late women in the latent phase have also been excluded and that is one disadvantage that uh, a lot of studies are still talking about and they want uh, a rectification on this whether or not that will happen is a separate story so that's it for the labor care guide thank you